Welcome back to week one, lesson two. So basically, I've broken up uh, week one's lesson into three different parts because um, each different part is actually quite important. Okay, and I think it's also better it's that we have three different parts so that you can have time to digest the information that I've given you. Uh, you can have your coffee break, you can have your Kit Kat, and we move on to learning. Okay, so the second part of the lecture, I'll be talking about making good arguments. Now, why is this important? Typically, when we talk about arguments, you would think about people who are having a misunderstanding or confronting each other. However, in WRS, arguments that we talk about here is just your stance or your opinion about a particular matter and your ability to find supporting, um, I guess, supporting evidences that can make your argument stronger okay please bear in mind uh, you still have to be very objective with how you structure your arguments or your claims when you write them in your argumentative essay yeah okay so uh, first of all what is an argument so if you look at the slides uh, an argument here is usually a person's stand about something so it's your main idea yeah which is often called a claim Okay, now it is also known as a thesis statement, but we'll deal with that in um, the lesson on how to write argumentative essays. Okay, so basically, uh, in order for a claim to be an argument, you need to back up your claim with evidences. When you have ample support or sufficient support for your claim, only then does it turn into an argument. Okay. Now, um, arguments are basically claims that are supported by reasons or evidences. Okay. Now, why do you need to come up with an argument? Because in this sense, when you're writing your argumentative essay, what you're trying to do is you're trying to persuade someone to accept your stand or your reasoning by presenting evidences that are strong, that are valid, and that is acceptable. Okay, so an argument is very different from a statement. A statement can just be as simple as, I like drinking Pepsi. That is a statement. Why? Because um, regardless of how I feel about it, my, my opinion is I like drinking Pepsi is a personal preference. So there's nothing to argue about. Okay, now uh, an argument would be something which is more, I wouldn't use the word controversial, but I would say that it invites some sort of debate. For example, studying in high, uh, private higher education institutions is better than public higher education institutions. institutions. Okay, so that would be an argument because there is a debate that can go on and each side can present their own opinions okay, or their claims, but each side must also provide evidences to support why they feel the way they do. Okay. Right. Now, basically, this is the structure of an argument. So basically, you can look at it as a house. Your claim or your stand or your opinion will be the roof. Okay. And each of the supporting evidences will be your pillars. Okay. Which are known as premises. Okay. So if you look at the um, visuals that I've given, your claims will be the roof. The premises are each of the pillars. Pillar 1 would be reason 1, pillar 2 or premise 2 is reason 2, and pillar 3 or uh, premise 3 would be the reasons. So typically, you would try to provide as much evidence as you can to make sure your argument is also very strong. Okay. Now, this is just one example. The cost of living in Miri is higher than KL. So this is my opinion. Yeah. How do I support this or how do I make this in, into an, uh, a stronger argument? My first reason or my first support would be rental prices are high. Why? Maybe because we are at the border. Yeah, we are um, at the border of Brunei. So the cost of living here is a bit higher, which also means the rental prices could be higher. Okay. Public transport is costly. Okay. As we all know, the bus services are not really that regular. So most people would have to resort to taking grabs and whatnot. So it's of course going to be higher okay or costly 
and third the food is expensive so based on these three premises or these three pillars i'm trying to build an argument and you can see how this actually supports my main idea or my claim okay now this is another example women are more dangerous drivers sorry men are more dangerous drivers compared to women okay why i can say first because men have more testosterone which makes them more aggressive and when they are more aggressive they tend to be more reckless which means they are more dangerous okay now i could also make my argument stronger by gathering evidences from insurance companies okay or i could read up on uh, articles that uh, prove maybe psychological articles or whatever that prove that men are involved in more car crashes men tend to be uh, maybe more reckless compared to women so that is another way for me to support the argument and the third one would be young adolescent males take more risks compared to women drivers okay of course i'm not saying women drivers are all good drivers but maybe men may be more dangerous in this particular instance so again it depends on the kind of evidences that you offer so if you look at Pillar number two, which is evidence from insurance companies and research in social science. This evidence is known as a valid evidence because you are taking it based on researches that have been done, which are factual. So these are the kind of evidences that you want to find to support your main claim in order for your argument to be a strong argument. Okay. Right. Now, how do you evaluate arguments? Uh, there are basically three things or three components that you can actually use to evaluate arguments. The first is when you read an argument or when you come across an argument, ask yourself, is this argument fair? Does it only present one side? If it is very balanced, it means it's objective. It takes account many different um, sides of the, the argument, many different uh, uh, what do you call it? Many different evidences that are presented. However, if it is skewed, this is known as biasness, which means the argument itself is actually quite poor. Okay, So you evaluate arguments based on their strength. Some arguments are strong when they, you give them very, very valid arguments, for example, researchers. But they are known as weak arguments when the argument is unfair, when it doesn't have any evidence or logic to it, Okay or if the tone seems very informal and sarcastic okay so you need to read up on these things yeah now um, you need to also base it on logic which means if you come across an argument do not accept it at face value look for supporting details or any other researchers or readings that say the same thing if you cannot find a reading that makes the same claim you should be very wary of the arguments that are being given okay so basically, uh, this particular visual that I'm giving you now is one way for you to assess whether an argument is actually good or not, whether it's poor or not. So please read it on your own. If you have any questions, feel free to um, email me or your lecturers, okay, and get them to explain it to you in detail, okay? But I think this visual is actually very comprehensive and it's quite clear. So try to read it first. If there's anything that you don't understand, feel free to um, ask us for clarification, all right? Okay, now let's uh, look at this very short exercise on how to evaluate arguments. Now, if I give you this as an argument, okay, um, would you consider this to be a good argument or strong argument? Okay, would you agree or disagree? Now let's look at the answer. Okay, now this is an example of an argument that is weak. Why? Because you are making hasty generalizations. That means you only have one case. Okay, or you have very little cases to support your idea. Okay, unless you can find a number of cases or a large population where people who lose their appendix commit suicide, only then can you make this claim. Okay, do you see how it works? Okay, so if you don't have enough evidences, you cannot draw a conclusion based on too little uh, support. Okay, now next. Right, this is my favorite argument. Asian students are good at math. 
or all Asian students are good at math. Is this a valid argument? Okay, what do you think? Right? No. Okay, so this is not a good argument because this is an example of stereotype. It means you make generalizations about a specific group of people only. Yeah, uh, We tend to be guilty of this. There are a lot of times when we make sweeping comments and we generalize one population to behave a certain way. Okay, uh, But we don't look into account other factors that may actually fall into place. Yeah, So there are a lot of times when... You know, one of the problems with this kind of uh, argument is we tend to be a bit racialistic as well. Yeah, we stereotype people, we pigeonhole them into a specific uh, attitude. Yeah, so this is one way for you to detect whether an argument is weak or strong. Okay, look at whether they generalize. All right, now what about this one? All good teachers come to class on time. Professor Simpson always comes to class on time. Therefore, Professor Simpson must be a good teacher. Is that a valid argument? Okay. Now, the answer is, it's not a valid argument. It's actually a poor argument because your first premise or your first uh, support is not correct. It's invalid. Okay. Right. The, someone could be a very good teacher, but they may not come to classes on time, all the time. Or maybe they just lose track of time, so they come to classes late. So uh, the qualities of a good teacher does not depend on whether they are punctual. There are a lot of different ways in which a person can be a good teacher. They can be good at explaining. They can be someone who is actually very smart and they are able to give you information in a very precise manner. So there are a lot of different ways in which a person can be a good teacher. So if one of your premises or one of the support that you've given is faulty, therefore your argument is also known as a weak argument. So you have to be a bit more careful when you try to find evidences. It could be bias as well. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, this one is also a very interesting argument. Now, let's say your grandmother had cancer and your mother had cancer. Therefore, you will also get cancer. Is this considered a strong argument? Okay. Now, the answer is... First, I need you to consider the premise. Your mother had cancer. Sorry, your grandmother had cancer. Okay. Uh, your mother had cancer as well. So these are two, should I say, quite logical premises, right? So in this case, there can be instances where the argument can actually be moderately strong. Why? Because generally, if the family has a history of cancer, uh, it means that this could be hereditary. Okay, but you also have to remember that there are many other various factors that leads to cancer as well. Okay, so um, it's better if you reword your argument to be compared to other people without a family history of cancer, you have an increased likelihood of getting this um, disease. Then your argument will be a stronger argument. Okay. So sometimes the way you word your arguments, you have to be quite careful also as well. Because if you, in your conclusion, make it very vague or you try to generalize, then your argument becomes a weak argument. So you've got to be careful with your wording as well. Okay, Use words like compared to, in comparison, uh, in contrast, and things like that. Okay, Make it tentative if you're not quite sure or the evidence doesn't really support it 100%. Yeah? So you've got to be a bit careful with your verbs that you use okay so this activity i would like you to try it out um, if you would like to try it out and get the answers feel free to again email the lecturers or you can uh, try it out on your own and then you can post this in the facebook group as a question and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible okay all right, that's it for the lesson today. So again, feel free to email, feel free to ask us the questions in our Facebook group or contact us via Moodle. Uh, again, we'll try our best to get back to you as soon as possible and we'll try our best to uh, try and clarify and explain things, you know, via written word as best as we can. All right, thank you.